you had mentioned that deflation, you, you imagine that prices will actually go down. And when I'm sitting here as somebody with money in a savings account, it would appear to me that, that the price of things going down would be really good. Now my money can go further. If you if you have if you are a net holder of financial assets, you'll be, be you'll be better off. You're, the debtor will be worse off. Um, let me just give you a, a couple of parameters with uh, what I'm talking about. If you look at the three worst post-war recessions, in other words, since since 1945, um, from the peak of inflation in or before the recession to the trough in inflation to the trough after the recession. Um, the, the the best measure of inflation dropped an average of about 430 basis points. In other words, if it were seven, it went to three, something like that. Um, okay. So, and that's the average. Um, but this time we're starting when the inflation rate is 1.7. We don't have a high inflation rate. We have a very low inflation rate. And moreover, uh, one of the wild cards in the inflationary story is what happens to the most critical of the raw materials, which is energy. Um, if you look at these three terrible previous recessions, the oil price was actually unchanged. It went up in two of them and it went down in one. And uh, oil is oil is kind of plays to its own tune. It's it's based on supply and demand characteristics and so forth. But uh, what we're looking at right now is a record-setting percentage decline in oil prices, which is the is the largest of the commodity prices. It, it's not a term of inflation, but it it adds to this this disinflationary. So. The, the risk is that we're going to go from 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 1.7 percent rate of inflation down to minus two. It's, it's a mild deflation. Um, it's not serious like it was in the in the Great Depression. But the risk is that it's going to be persistent. It's going to hang in there, and and there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one. We have these deleterious effects of all of this debt that we're taking on that are mandated by the circumstances. We have no choice other than to try to help people through the matter. Okay. So moreover, once once we get our pent-up demand recovery and economic activity right after after the coronavirus is contained, we're going to have tremendous amounts, actually. I should say, unprecedented amounts of what economists call of the output gap, which is the, the amount of redundant resources that we have in labor and capital. And because of this huge output gap, unprecedented output gap, and the fact that we're going to struggle out, it's going to take us six to nine years to shrink this output gap and get it back to where it was in 2019. Now, when you say the output gap, do you mean that because we're going to have such high unemployment, we're going to have people that aren't working and then you're going to have capital assets that aren't being used or, or a machinery that you're not actually putting to use? So e even if you had people that wanted to buy it, you don't have enough to be able to get that um, supply. That's precisely what I'm talking about. Okay. The two okay. main components of the output gap are labor and capital resources. They just won't be needed. And so, um, when you when when there is a lot of ex extra resources, then um, the the whole the owners of those resources are forced to sell their services their their product at lower prices creates a margin squeeze. It puts downward downward pressure on the inflation rate. And so the the significant risk here is that is when we go to deflation, the output gap suggests it will be staying with us. And probably we will see something that most people are not familiar with. Wages will actually fall. 
they won't have to fall dramatically, but they will they will be persistently downward. Well, that's what what firms, who, managers who know nothing about measuring deflation, are going to have to grapple with, and the employees don't know about having wages cut, and so it's going to create a a very very challenging situation. So, in deflation, what you 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 don't want to be a debtor. Because let's say you borrow a dollar today and we have a 2% deflation rate a year from now, you're going to have to pay back in purchasing power dollars that are worth a dollar and two cents. And um, the other aspect of deflation is that although the treasury rates come down, the corporate rates go up and the private borrowing rates go up because in, 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 in deflation, it will it will raise the risk premium that the non-governmental borrowers will be able to repay, and so you're going to have an ironical situation: the government yields come down, but the other yields don't really, uh, and and so uh, it will be a a difficult process.